I, it's inspiring to me to be around that. I'm not a student here. I can imagine if I were a student here and be given the chance to work on a project that might actually land on the moon, actually maybe has a really good chance of doing that. I imagine just that in itself would be inspiring. So sometimes it just takes taking a leap, uh, uh, the mindset that the seemingly impossible is in fact possible and maybe even probable. That's part of the mindset I think that, that makes Red Whitaker successful. That's um, what I find fascinating about people like this. What makes them tick? What drives them? And more, even maybe more importantly, what uh, gives them the ability to inspire people around them to achieve the things that they do? You know, that's, that's a huge part of it. Get people fired up, and confident in their own abilities, and encouraging them in just the right way. That's the mark of a, a really good teacher, too, I think. It's something that Red seems to excel at. The general public has lost interest in space. I mean, it was a peak interest with Apollo. I think it had the largest television audience ever, you know, when, when people actually stepped out onto the surface of the moon. And now, uh, my impression is that most people really don't think that much about space. And I think that these commercial efforts have the potential to spark that interest again and get people excited about it again. And, and that's where the media can come in. If, they, if the media starts covering these events more frequently, then there might actually be some competition to you know, maybe start purchasing some of the feeds off some of these uh, spacecraft or, or rovers. The government space program is all sort of free. You know, uh, maybe a media company will have to go, you know, buy some of that footage. Well, or there might be some entertainment value in having people drive rovers on the moon, shooting commercials on the moon, you know, things like that. And those are all things that are, I think, possible. We don't really know what's really going to work until we've got the capability. And that just as the, when personal computers came in, very few people could predict what a computer would be used for. No one could predict that most of us would be carrying around computers in our pockets at all times and feel sort of, you know, helpless without them. It took having the capability, having a, the affordable machine that people could start banging around on and, and interacting with and trying to and figure out how to use them. And then we finally had all this much greater activity. I think space is in a similar position right now. We're just starting to see the, the, the affordability that might lead to much greater activity. And we just have to wait and see what that's going to be. So the goal of the private players is to make it sustainable and that you, you can do things um, sometimes uh, with baby steps. So with the, with the first X Prize, the goal was let's just get out of the atmosphere, prove that that can be done, and then we can build on that to go into orbit. And now we're seeing, hey, let's go beyond low Earth orbit. So the idea is that you can fund each step, prove its feasibility, and find customers and markets for each one of those steps. So the, the first X Prize created a whole new market that didn't exist before, which was suborbital human spaceflight. You know, no one thought that, well, a few visionaries thought that this could be a viable enterprise. But the establishment, the, you know, the conventional thinking was that this is a ridiculous <laughs> business model. No one's going to want to, you know, no one's going to be able to build a business uh, on people who just want to go into space. And of course, that's been proven wrong. All kinds of people are signing up for that. And that, that funds the rocket shops, the people building the motors, the, the, the infrastructure to keep building. So now, now you'll be able to, another company will be able to build on the work of, of, of those other efforts, those first efforts. And you start to build an infrastructure. And then, you know, suddenly you'll be able to buy off the shelf a rocket motor to use on your own application or, or you know, an avionics package or whatever it is. Just like, you know, if you're a car builder, you can source parts from different suppliers. So we're not talking about huge amounts of money now that it's, it's possible to do these things much more affordably and the price will keep dropping. So it's a fairly small investment to realize these potentially very large gains. So I think it's worth our while to do it, especially when it doesn't depend overly on taxpayer and public money. Hey, if it's a private company doing this private investment, you know, it's, it's no different from, you know, building computers or, or automobiles or any other design intensive project like that. There is a kind of a disconnect um, for, I think, I have to say, probably the majority of people who don't really see the intrinsic value of going to space. I do think it's important, though. I mean, if you look on, on big uh, geological time scale, life on planet Earth has been nearly wiped out several times. 
all it takes is a large enough asteroid to hit Earth and it could wipe out human civilization, even if it doesn't render us extinct. So the thinking goes, you know, we're here we are huddled on this little rock that is potentially fragile. You know, I think there's a lot of validity to that. Now it's on a potentially very large time scale. Um, but even, but even on, a, on a much um, more personal level, if all the astronauts I've talked to who've been to space describe it as a transformative experience. Uh, you know, one Skylab astronaut told me that he, he didn't think anyone could go to space and not come back as an environmentalist. There's something about seeing the Earth in context and, and really having a visceral understanding that, hey, this is it, the, you know, all of human history. You know, like the, uh, the Apollo astronauts could, could reach out and put their thumb over the entire planet Earth to see the Earth in context. Um, aside from all the science, too, it's, it's really not possible to get a really good picture on climate change and the habitat changes and the things that we're, we're doing to the planet or changes that might be happening naturally. It's, it's harder to, to get that perspective without being able to see it all in context. The idea that you could put your thumb over all of human history really puts it into perspective. That this is a fragile environment that we're in and coming back to Earth with that perspective leads to a different kind of relationship with the, with the home planet and the people who live on it. I think that is intrinsically valuable.